Okay, and we're live. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome back to Future Proof. This is the today is Thursday, the the fourteenth of January, twenty twenty one. This is the first uh, episode of Future Proof of the year, right? So happy New Year to everyone. Hope everyone's doing well, and hope everyone had a had a special start to twenty twenty one, right? Uh, you know, with your New Year's resolution, as as always, right? I always start off. The new year, uh, wanting to you know buy more Bitcoin and 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 you know get healthier and stuff. So so look, welcome to 2021. Welcome to Future Proof. Welcome back. Right. So we have had a bit of a of a break to recharge our batteries. Uh, today is day two of our MCO 2.0 lockdown. I uh, hope everyone is doing okay. Everyone who's uh, uh, you know had enough of staying home. Uh, you know, look, uh, it's not that bad. You know, um, count your blessings. You have. You know, uh, we're you, we're safe. We're safe at home, right? And and that's the important thing. Uh, you know, new COVID cases today, three thousand three hundred thirty-seven, uh, with uh, fifteen deaths. I think that might be the highest on record. Uh, so stay safe, everyone. Right? Uh, remember, you know, stay home, stay indoors. Right? Uh, this is exact. This is what the what the MCO is hoping to do. Right? Hoping to to break that. Um, uh, the number of new infections daily. Uh, I think our total numbers infected now stand at 30 over 1,000. So that's not great. But, you know, stay positive and uh, wash your hands. Now, uh, tonight, today's actually the second Thursday of the month. And usually every second Thursday of the month, we get Dino from Sentiment to come on. Uh, but Dino messaged me and uh, told me that uh, right after New Year's, he actually felt uh, sick. And uh, he's not, he's not too well, so uh, you know he's uh, wishing him a, a speedy recovery. I uh, hope he gets well soon, and uh, we'll see him next month, right? In the next second Thursday of the month next year, uh, next month in February, right? Uh, also, uh, you know, an announcement for next week. Uh, next week we have a very, 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 very special guest. Uh, it wasn't easy, uh, you know, getting him, and and I uh, I met. Uh, so his name is Jonas Schnelli. Right, he is one of the four Bitcoin core developers who actually has access to check in uh, the Bitcoin code source code back into the repository. There's only four people in the world who has it. Uh, he's one of the four, so uh, you know we're, we're very lucky to get him, and um, he's going to shed some light on you know the entire Bitcoin ecosystem. I, I know that Bitcoin's really hot, right? Since mid December till now, uh, a lot of people have been messaging me, texting me, calling me. Uh, well, before the the lockdown, you know, uh, getting getting invitations to lunch and dinner. Uh, so 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 the interest is rising. The interest is rising in crypto in Bitcoin, and uh, people are interested to get in now. So um, I just wanted to you know, besides price, right, and everything else that you've read uh, on the internet or or watched on YouTube, uh, we have a pretty interesting uh uh. uh a, a revelation or at least just to share uh, uh, shed some light on on the the entire bitcoin ecosystem right and and next week's episode we're actually going to focus on uh the developers the the actual people who are writing and, and looking through the code and and making bitcoin better right uh better and 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 you know uh, for all of us right so that will be next week okay uh look welcome to those who have just joined us um, you know, uh, thank you for spending time with us this evening. Uh, don't forget to share, right? Share, share this, right? Share, like, and please subscribe, right? And if if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to actually click on the the, the, the bell button, right? So that you get notified each time. Okay, uh, click on the bell button. Uh, choose all so that every time we come, we we, we go live, you get it. Uh, if you're on Facebook, please follow us. If you're tuning in from Twitch, please follow us. Right, tag your friends. Your friends might be interested. Uh, you might be getting, uh, you yourself might be getting a lot of inquiries, a lot of phone calls and messages, right? Uh, to uh, about Bitcoin, about crypto. Um, you know, tag them, right? Tag them now so that they can come on and and watch this, right? Throughout the evening, uh, feel free to throw in any questions you might have. Any questions, uh, uh, you know, uh, will will not be left unanswered, right? I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, let's see what else. What else? Um, so Bitcoin is currently at thirty-eight point two thousand. Uh, it hit a high this year, this month actually, uh, at over forty-two thousand. 
Yeah, it was over forty-two thousand dollars. That, that's insane. That's more than double uh, its previous all-time high, which was at nineteen point five or six thousand in uh, in December of 2017. So, welcome, welcome everyone. Okay, so let's see. Um, what are we gonna talk about today? Okay. Today, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin and valuation. So uh, how do we value a Bitcoin? Now, you know, a, a lot of, um, you know, I get a lot of questions. Hey, uh, but it's so expensive now. Can I still buy? You know, um, this, uh, wait, let me share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share a tab. And uh, there you go. Okay, uh, yeah, I forgot to do a mic check. Uh, mic check, mic check, and uh, someone please let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. If you can, please uh, just give a thumbs up or put put a, a, a you know put your comment in the in the message in the messages section and let me know if you can hear me. Okay, uh, now where am I? Cool. Okay, so uh, let me just present this. Yeah, so like I was saying, I'm getting a lot of questions, right? All right, thank you, KP Chin. Cool, thanks, Nicholas. All righty, now, um, so yeah, so I, I get, you know, I, I get a lot of questions. Hey, you know, um, uh, it, it's 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 so expensive now. Can I still buy? Um, uh, you know, uh, or can I buy now? You know, and so anyway, today let's 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 go through um, how. Uh, others have uh, valued right. What what valuation models that others have done um, to to try to put a value? Like what models have they done to try to value how much one Bitcoin uh, will be worth? Right now, this is a disclaimer. Right, um, the the SC has actually put out a notice on the thirtieth um, of December uh, last year. Uh, to note about you know giving out financial advice, especially to a lot of these investment gurus. Now, I am not an investment guru. Uh, I am not a professional financial advisor. Uh, I'm just here to share with you my research on on, on the topics that that we look at, right? So we look at uh, you know I'm I'm a huge crypto enthusiast. Uh, I've been talking Bitcoin for as long as I can remember, right? I live, I breathe, I dream, I sleep, right? I, <laughs> it, it's all you know. Uh, tech and crypto so that that's my passion and that's something that um uh, i'm here to share uh, i'm here to share my research and so please do not take this as financial advice uh, uh you know this is just the sharing of uh, my research that i've done and hopefully you will save some time and gain something from it but definitely do not go out and uh, make any financial decision uh, after watching this episode or any of the Future Proof episodes, right? Uh, do not, uh, if, if you're going to make any financial decisions or any investment decisions, please consult with your professional um, financial advisor, okay? So um, now that we've got that out of the way, uh, let's go through, um, uh, okay, a question. Uh, since our last Future Proof episode, how many of you, have actually gone out and bought Bitcoin. Now, I, I think that's probably two weeks. I think two weeks we were not on, two or three weeks. So how many of you have actually gone out and bought some Bitcoin? Come on, let me see some hands. Or you've sold because the price has gone up so high. Do put in the comment section below. How many How many bought, how many sold? Um, or if it wasn't Bitcoin, was it, you know, what other coins have you bought? Um, you know what actions have you taken All right because it's been a very you know since the last future proof episode it's been a very exciting space right um I, I know there's a lot of interest right now so yeah put it in the comment section below okay now before we move on um let's let's just be a you know i'd like to share a reminder right uh let's all not get scammed darren so darren uh ah darren's been uh DCAing and hodling. So DCA stands for dollar cost averaging. So Darren's been just, I assume you've just been buying every every month, right? Your paycheck comes in and you you buy it. It doesn't matter what price it is, right? 
Uh, uh, so we've got Emery. Emery's bought and sold some Zilliqa. Uh, Leiching has bought some Ethereum, some ETH, and some Litecoin. Nice, nice. Well done, well done. Um, yeah, so going back to um, um, what I was talking about, uh, you know, this is a time where, you know, everyone's very exciting, uh, very excited. Everyone's talking about it. Uh, Brontok, you bought your first Bitcoin two days ago. Congratulations, Brontok. Well done. Um, and, you know, uh, those of you who have recently gone in, like for the very first time, and you bought crypto, which is a, a, a new asset class, uh, do share with us, like, what compelled you to take that action. Like, for example, Brontok, you bought your first Bitcoin two days ago. What compelled you? What pushed you to go and buy Bitcoin, what was it like? What made you decide? Hey, you know what? I'm gonna buy some Bitcoin. Uh, do share. I, I'm I'm very interested. Um, especially with the with the newcomers. Uh, you bought and sold Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Fantastic! Congratulations. I assume you've made money. Well done. Okay. So yeah. So look. Um, now's the time where a lot of you, you will you will start to see more and more scams pop up. And these scams are very. Uh, I'll I'll show you a few examples of the scams and 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 let this be a warning, right? Um, that because uh, I remember during 2017, uh, again, you know, there were so many scams. Uh, a lot of people, you know, uh, uh, bought coins, lost coins, right? Uh, and 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 the scams are sometimes quite simple and sometimes they're quite sophisticated. Um, and a lot of the times, it's um, you know you just have to be a little bit more aware of of the types of scams around, uh, so that you can look out for it and 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 know what to do, right? And and know what not to do. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at the at the comments, right? Uh, so Lei Ching says, uh, "Future digital currency, blockchain is the future tech." Yes, yes. Uh, Brontox says, uh, "Because uh, your bank account just got verified." After so long, <laughs> ah, so so I assume you would have gone in earlier, okay? Uh, so help me. Um, you put some cash in crypto because uh, market in Malaysia is not stable because of politics. Uh, okay, so that's that's quite a that's quite a a a common um uh, reason uh, why people go into crypto as well, I guess. So okay, uh, Terence, um, <laughs> Terence, <says, laughs> thank Terence. Terence Low, thank you for being uh, for being so honest. <laughs> Terence says he uh, he FOMO'd and uh, uh, he, oh he wants to get in but still waiting for further correction. Uh, he's looking for a platform to buy. Uh, look, Terence, if you're in Malaysia, uh, there are three uh, licensed um, uh, digital asset exchanges that you can use, uh, and and these three are licensed by the Securities Commission, the SC. Uh, they are tokenized Malaysia Luno as well as uh, third one is synergy right so any of these three um they are you know they've been licensed by the sc so yeah uh, again i'm not telling you to go and buy i'm just saying that you know this is what's available okay so now you know during these times there, there are actually a lot of scams that happen right and 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 you you just have to be aware you have to be careful now uh take a look at the screen here right you've got apple right um so th this was actually a twitter hack uh, some of the some major accounts were actually hacked, right? Uh, it says uh, it. So if you can't read it, it says we are giving back to our community, and, and this is the Apple with a blue tick on Twitter, right? It says we're giving back to our community. We support Bitcoin, and we believe you should too. All Bitcoin sent to our address below will be sent back to you double. Now, uh, and and then there's there, there's that Bitcoin address there. And it says only going on for the next 30 minutes. Now, please, you know, sometimes these scams are like pretty straightforward. Um, do not let greed uh, get a better of you, right? Um, no one's going to give you double your Bitcoin if you send them a Bitcoin, right? Or some Bitcoin, and they're not going to double it. No, nobody's going to do that for you. Uh, this is an outright scam. Uh, and, and yet, I think they still manage to, some people actually, well, quite a lot of people actually sent uh, sent Bitcoin to that address, um, and it was quite big for a while. You know, um, it, it, you know, I'm pretty sure that address is now being tracked, and uh, yeah. So don't fall for scams like this. Whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum or Litecoin, uh, when someone says, "Hey, send me," you know, send some Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum to me, and I will send you double or triple back. Uh, yeah, not gonna happen, right? It's an outright scam. So uh, please remember that. 
Uh, hi, Ken. Welcome, welcome. Now, the other one um, that I see quite often uh, is this. So, so, if, so for those of you who recognize, uh, this is Steve Wozniak. Um, he, he, so, so, whenever you, uh, so, if you start, if you start searching for and start um, looking at, at YouTube videos, right, uh, and you start searching for, you know, Bitcoin or crypto or whatever, uh, there's usually an ad that that comes on before the you know, the video that you want to watch, right? And a lot of the times, what you'll see is you'll see like a QR code there, right? And then you'll see, you know, the same stuff, like this is the address, send some Bitcoin, if, you know, for every X amount, you get double and this and that. Um, again, scam. Uh, why YouTube allows it, I don't know. Uh, a lot of complaints have gone to YouTube, but I, I suspect it's because YouTube, uh, you know, it's too large. So they let the AI take care of the censorship, right? Uh, the, the, they don't have enough humans to kind of censor the ads that come through. But And, and so all these scammy ads actually uh, get through the system and uh, people also, you know, people still get, they, they get scammed, right? Because, you know, the greed takes hold, takes hold, takes over and you're like, oh, uh, if I send one Bitcoin, I'm going to get two Bitcoins. I'm going to be rich. Yeah, no, not going to happen, right? So please be aware. I just want to make sure that everyone's aware because in this, in the euphoria of, you know, um, uh, you know, this one, 200 percent increases um, in your investment, uh, it gets pretty exciting and then you start to get greedy. So just be careful. Um, this one, this one's been, you know, this one's been his, well documented, right? This one's history. It, uh, it was called the one coin, right? They took in billions of dollars. A lot of people got scammed. Right, so um, be aware, right? Especially if you're new to this space uh, and and you're in Malaysia, go, you know, make sure. You, so in in Malaysia, the SC has only approved four coins uh, to that's allowed to be traded on the digital asset exchanges, right? The licensed digital asset exchanges. There are only four coins. You can you can buy or sell Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, uh, and XRP. Uh, actually, XRP is an interesting one because a lot of um, exchanges around, like very large exchanges around the world, have started have started to delist um, XRP because the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission in the US, uh, is going after Ripple, right? Um, so it, it remains to be seen. So, so that's quite interesting. But you know, either way, it's going to be good because whatever outcome. That comes out from from this uh, from this case, uh, there will be clarity. So not a bad thing. Okay. So yeah. So look, just be aware. Lots of scams around, right? There will be links. Uh, there might be websites that have malware. Uh, you know, and and if it's really late at night, uh, and you're transferring coins between one wallet to the other or to the exchange and back, and you're copying and pasting stuff, please, 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 right? Uh. Be very aware and always double, triple, quadruple check that you're sending to the correct, correct wallet address. Um, and and look, I'll be the first to admit uh, I have sent uh, amounts of you know like coins to a, a wrong wallet address because I was copying and pasting different wallet addresses, and and I have I have lost coins that way. So please always triple check. Um, and here's a pro tip: always look at the last four to five digits of the of the address right uh, that'll kind of help you determine whether or not you're you're sending to the to the the intended wallet address okay all right darren's got a question uh what are your thoughts on stock to flow model um has been pretty accurate in, in terms of its trajectory also been talked about lately in various exchanges articles uh yeah there look that's one of the very um uh, are very talked about models. Uh, there are actually a lot of models, right? Uh, so Kathy Wood from Ark Invest, they they have um, uh, th uh, three of the well, they have quite a few models as well, you know, and um, and the the logic based on that as well. Uh, that wasn't based on stock to flow, but it was based on um, uh, a more macro view, right? Um, and today, uh, you know, Paul Tudor Jones had um, had had his model as well, and then look, there there are many other models. Um, and tonight we're going to talk about uh, one of those models as well. All right, Agnes is a question. 
Agnes is for newbies in Malaysia. Which uh, of the four coins you mentioned to start with uh, if we have limited budget? All right, so Agnes, I'm going to tell you straight out, I am not allowed to give any financial advice, so I'm sorry I cannot tell you. Um, but do do your research. Uh, make sure you watch. Come on Future Proof, right? Uh, because I try to shortcut your learning curve. Uh, you know, talk to people uh, and, and, to, and, and, you know, Google about it, find out more. Uh, to see which one resonates well with you. And anyway, look, um, th there's four different coins, um, and uh, I'm pretty sure the um, the Securities Commission would not have uh, sanctioned or would not have allowed these coins. Uh, they they would have had some rigorous checklist to uh, for it to get approved, right? Because there are eight thousand two hundred coins out there right now. Uh, but the the SC has only approved four, so I, I think if anything, the the, the SC has um, gone through their their due di due diligence and and they would have approved these these four coins, right? Um, Rashan has a question. Um, oh no, okay, no question. All right, so um, moving on, moving on to the next one, right? So where are we now, right? So so. Oh, for those who did not know, so the Bitcoin network came online January 3rd, 2009, right? So on January 3rd, which was uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago, right? Uh, Bitcoin celebrated its 12th birthday, right? And on the on the 3rd, um, it, well, it closed, it closed above 30 grand, right? Then it went on to shoot up to 42, uh, of which it then came back down to about 30, about 30 and then 31 and now we're back at around 38 right 38.2 or so so uh yeah so for those of you who don't know bitcoin has only been in existence for or been online uh for 12 years and in that 12 years um the bitcoin network has not been successfully hacked right and, and so that that's a and it has not been turned off either so that's um that's something to know uh Lei Ching has a question uh on what my opinion is of ETH Ethereum 2.0. Look, uh so essentially Ethereum 2.0 is an attempt uh to move the, the 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 blockchain from what's known as a proof of work uh, over to a proof of stake. Uh it is also an attempt to uh to make the the network more efficient and faster and um uh, be able to put uh to to go through, uh, um, what's the word? To be able to process more transactions and more throughput. So, I, um, I think it's great. You know, I think I think uh, Ethereum has a great ecosystem. It's got great support. It's got a lot of brilliant minds who's working in it. Um, and it's interesting, right? Because um, there's a lot of tribalism in this space. You've got, you know, the the, the maximalists of of each camp, right? And, and they they kind of at each other's throats. Um, but I I, I think well. This is probably just healthy competition, uh, uh, but either way, you know, I, I think it's it's great. Like it's great that we're allowed to uh, experiment, right? Uh, conduct these experiments, and 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 the community itself, uh, the support within the community is very important. So there's a lot of support, uh, and there's a lot. Uh, so I, I I look forward to uh, to Ethereum 2.0, right? Uh, XRP. Uh, sorry. Uh, so Ben has a question. Ben from YouTube. Uh, is XRP one of the four coins the SC approved? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, what's the current situation with them? Well, uh, you know, the SEC in, um, in the US is going after them. And um, I guess it remains to be seen. I know Coinbase um, has, is delisting them. Uh, Grayscale has been selling down and um, selling down the XRP uh, uh, that's held in their trust. Uh, I think... Um, Binance US has also delisted or will be delisting XRP. Uh, so yeah, it remains to be seen. This is um, this is really interesting, right? Okay, so what are we talking about next? Okay, now just to share, right? Um, if you if you see that that extreme um, sharp point here. So this is the amount uh, of of transactions or, or um, trade volume uh, on Binance. So Binance is one of the largest crypto exchanges in the world, right? Um, and this one is 
uh, Coinbase, right? Uh, on that one day, uh, I think this was probably the third, the third. Oh, anyway, it was, it was on one day. Uh, I think that might have been the third of January. Binance did thirty billion dollars uh, worth of volume. Thirty billion dollars. That's U.S. dollars for you in one day. One day. So um, is is crypto going? Is is crypto going mainstream? Uh, more and more people coming on. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. Uh, but you definitely see an increase in volume. Uh, Coinbase similarly, you know, did about nine billion in that day, but Binance did about thirty billion. So that's insane volume, right? For any exchange. Okay, we've got some. Uh, so we have some comments. Uh, Darren says, uh, "I read that um, ETH or Ethereum." has a lot of room for growth uh, because of the vers versatility uh, in daily applications. What about Litecoin? What are some of the applications uh, made apart from gaming? Um, and uh, Lei Ching says, uh, there was an article a few days ago saying that the uh, TP is going to be 10K. Any idea? Right. Um, not sure what TP is, Lei Ching. Okay, so Darren... Um, yeah, look, uh, you know, uh, so those of you who have been following Future Proof, uh, you would have heard me talk about DeFi. Uh, you would have heard from Michael Burgess, the uh, COO of uh, the Ren Protocol, come on the show as well to talk about uh, what they do uh, in the DeFi space. Um, Ethereum seems to be the platform of choice for a lot of DeFi applications. Uh, those of you who do not know what DeFi is, it's D-E-F-I, stands for Decentralized Finance. Um, it is essentially the disintermediation uh, of the financial system, uh, as in they are recreating uh, the current financial system, but they're replacing a lot of the functions uh, with codes and scripts, right? So that a lot of it is automated. Uh, so look, I, I, if anything, Ethereum seems to be the platform of choice right now for a lot of decentralized apps. So yeah. Uh, Litecoin, look, uh, I've always been a, a, a big fan of Litecoin. Uh, maybe because uh, if you if you use if you if you use uh, if you do a lot of transactions, right, uh, with crypto, you find that look, uh, Bitcoin you probably can do, but you wouldn't do Bitcoin for uh, smaller amount of transactions. Although you can, you can use the Lightning Network. Um, then there's always Litecoin because Litecoin is always cheaper to send and faster to send. Right, essentially, Litecoin uh, is just a copy. It's one of the oldest uh, uh, coins, actually. Um, it was uh, it was released in 2011, so it's pretty old, and and it it's it survived all this while, right? It's um it's always been in the background. It's a little bit quiet, right? It doesn't, um, you know, uh, it, it. I mean, that there's only one function right now, which is um, for transfer of value, and uh, I I like it, right? I like Litecoin a lot because uh, it it's well, it's cheaper. Uh, and it's and it's also a lot cheaper to send, so cheaper and faster to send, right? So it's like the light version of a Bitcoin. Uh, target price, Lei Ching, right? So uh, target price is going to 10k. Any idea? Okay, so Lei Ching say, uh, says that there was an article a few years ago that says that the target price, uh, I'm assuming this is for Bitcoin, uh, is going to 10k. Any idea? Um, I haven't read the article. I'm not sure. Um, so I I'm sorry I can't comment on that one. Um, will DeFi? Uh, so Lei Ching has another question: Will DeFi take over conventional banking system in the future? Look, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, just like when the when the internet was first introduced, uh, you know, a lot of publications, uh, you know, uh, we were saying that it it will take over publications, but no, you know, the publications are still around. Uh, they've they've managed to coexist. Um, I I don't see any difference here. I, I you know I think banks will still be around, uh, but how things are done may be different in future. Okay, so. I'm gonna continue uh, with uh, with the deck, right? So okay, um, so there's this thing called the Lindy effect, right? So the Lindy effect um, is used often whenever we discuss Bitcoin. So the Lindy effect states that the longer technology lives, the longer it can be expected to live, right? So it's very simple. Uh, uh, you know where, like, what's this Lindy effect? Where did it come from? Uh, you know who 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 thought of it. So, uh, so Lindy is actually a, a deli uh, in New York, right? 
and and now it's a you know a lot of tourists well maybe not now pre-pandemic i suppose a lot of tourists uh would go there right because they're famous for its cheesecake so actors back in the day used to hang out um hang out there and, and you know gossip about actors and uh talk about broadway shows and stuff and and so from there um they you know they um they, they said that you know if if a broadway show uh has lasted 100 days uh you know it's highly likely that it will last another 100 right uh, for those that have lasted 200 days it's quite likely that it will last for another 200 right so the longer something's been around the long uh, the higher probability it has of sticking around right so that's essentially what the lindy effect is right so the question is has bitcoin reached uh the mainstream Right? Has Bitcoin reached the mainstream? So I, I think um, let's discuss three points. Right? Um, so GBTC is essentially a uh, trust. Um, what you can do is essentially you can buy the shares and uh, it's like an ETF, but it's, it's not technically an ETF. And um, it is the, the trust then holds the underlying asset, which is Bitcoin. Right? So there's a, uh, so GBTC is now at 10% of the gold tracking ETFs, right? So you can see this rise, uh, the, the white one. Uh, now that that is the GBTC growth. And the pink one is actually gold. So you, you see gold almost dipping down while Bitcoin's going up. So it looks like um, there's, there's, there's big interest, right? There, there's, there's, there's a lot of interest in, in, uh, in Bitcoin. And this GBTC um, serves a lot of institutional investors. Right, because of regulations, they can only buy GBTC rather than the actual underlying asset. So, uh, those of you who don't know, Coinbase is actually one of the largest uh, crypto exchanges. Uh, they've been around for a while now, uh, and in fact, uh, it's also one of the easiest uh, interfaces to to use. Right, um, and and so they've been uh, that you know they 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 fought for their IPO. Um, and uh, and uh, so in comparison, right? So Charles Schwab, uh, now they're the biggest U.S. retail broker. Uh, they've been around for fifty years, right? Uh, and they have twenty nine point two million accounts. Uh, Coinbase, Coinbase, right? Which has been around since twenty fourteen, if I'm not wrong. Uh, they have thirty five million accounts. So there you go. You've got a fifty year old largest, biggest U.S. retail broker. With 29.2 million accounts and coinbase has more than them and they've only they've been around for less than 10 years so this is pretty amazing right so they they so that's one of the points so uh, you know uh, is it going mainstream well perhaps maybe um so this is an interesting one right so um this guy here is the uh, M so mit professor uh gary gensler right uh it is said that he may be uh, you know named uh the next uh sec chairman uh so he's um so what's interesting is that gary is actually a uh he's on the on the board of um uh uh of of, of the um uh, what's that? The MIT Media Lab Digital Currency Initiative, right? Uh, it's actually the third biggest funder of developers working on open source Bitcoin, right? Or, or Lightning uh, projects, uh, and and so um, he is. Um, uh, it's interesting if he becomes the next SEC chairman because, as we all know, the SEC um, up till now hasn't. I mean, they, they, you know, they, they, they've been doing the job. They've been very careful about it. So, um, uh, but this guy has been in the space, right? So he understands uh, cryptos. He understands, uh, you know, crypto assets, cryptocurrency. So it'll be interesting if, um, yeah, if if he if he goes, if he becomes the uh, the next the next uh, uh, SEC chairman, right? So yeah, so he's the MIT digital currency uh, senior advisor. Now, ah, this one is, uh, I included this here because this is a uh, news, uh, maybe one, one and a half week old, right? The OCC, the, um, in the US, the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, 
right there, regulator. They um, they essentially said, uh, you know, um, you can use cryptocurrency or um, uh, 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 for federal banks uh, to do settlement, right? Um, and, and the this big picture here is actually from the uh, from their website. Uh, federally chartered banks and thrifts may participate in independent note verification networks. So essentially, I guess running your own note. So if, if you're part of the Bitcoin network, you would run your own note uh, or the Ethereum note, right? Uh, and, and they can use sell, uh, stable coins for payment activities. So this is pretty huge news, right? Uh, from back in the day when uh, it used to be despised and, and, and was hated by the banks to um, the, the regulators saying that, hey, you know what? Uh, it's actually more efficient, so you guys can actually use this to to do settlement. So that's that's fantastic. So I've just got a quote here, right? Um, we we determined that Bitcoin was not a security; it was much more a payment mechanism uh, and stored value. Our current payment mechanisms uh, have inefficiencies uh, that are driving the rise of Bitcoin. So this is by Jay Clayton, the ex SEC chairman, right? He recently. Uh, uh, step down and yeah so this is uh this is all very positive right very positive news so what inefficiencies right uh well you know this just okay so there's a map here right this is the world map see where those dark spots are those are all bitcoin nodes right i think there's about eleven thousand that can be seen and probably many other thousands that cannot be seen uh in this map but there's uh, there's this there's, there's, there's a lot of notes right um so ie it's very good backups very good redundancy plan uh so okay so on april 12 2020 uh, someone actually transferred 161,500 bitcoins in a single transaction now the transaction was settled in 10 minutes well that's one block uh, usually uh, you'd want to wait for about you know six blocks so about an hour um and and the fee for processing the transaction was only 68 cents so that's cool like that's cheap right so it's very efficient um obviously you contrast that to an international money wire it'll take you know a couple of days uh, you can only go during uh, banking hours it'll, you know and and i uh, you know the fees will be uh, a little bit more because of the way the banking uh, systems are structured right so yeah, so essentially um, what Bitcoin is, right? Uh, Bitcoin uh, is an unmanaged software network with zero employees, right? Uh, they can settle a 1 billion plus transaction in minutes. Uh, whereas, you know, the largest banks in the world will take, you know, a couple, couple of days to move whatever amount, right? Okay, so um, this is from the abstract of the uh, Bitcoin white paper uh, by Satoshi Nakamoto. Um so it says right um uh, bitcoin is a peer to peer electronic cash system right bitcoin is a payment network um if if so if bitcoin succeeds as a network uh it would likely to be more valuable as uh as we'll show you right as we go along so what is a network right uh, we need to understand what a network is so um as defined by andreessen uh, Andreessen Horowitz, uh, it says that net, a network is a group of interconnected people, example, a social network, uh, or systems of things, right? So telephones, printers, uh, computers, and all that, uh, you know, what they say, the IoT, right? So that's essentially what a network is. Uh, so what drives the growth of networks? Um, I don't know if you guys, uh, you guys probably have been uh, aware or, or are aware. Uh, but there's been a massive, massive, massive exodus um, and a migration from WhatsApp into Telegram and into Signal, right? In fact, um, I was reading on some on some comments the other day that the uh, there was so much uh, people on the Signal network that the uh, I think the servers were, couldn't really take it and, and it was slowing down a little bit because Facebook. Uh, or WhatsApp sent a sent a uh, uh, or they revised their their their, their policies 
And uh, if you wanted to continue using WhatsApp, you you had to agree to the new terms and conditions, uh, which is to allow Facebook to then use the information uh, from from WhatsApp, right? And uh, it's interesting because even Elon Musk uh, 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 tweeted about it. And it was funny because when he tweeted about it, uh, it sent uh, the share price of another share called Signal something uh, up at least uh, almost 100%, which was quite funny. Um, so yeah, so essentially what drives the growth of networks? Uh, network effects. The answer is network effects. So network effects drives the growth of networks. Now, these, these are very powerful concepts, right? Uh, so what is a network effect? Again, taken from Andreessen Horowitz. Um, so simply put, a network effect occurs when a product or service becomes more valuable to its users as more people use it. So the more people come on, uh, the, 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 the product or that service that's provided becomes even more useful, right? So for example, if I had uh, the first, very first mobile phone ever made, it's not very useful because, you know, it's just one phone, right? But then when you add two people, like if someone else has it, well, now you've got two phones, you can call each other. It becomes quite valuable a service. Uh, you add a third person, or now that one person can call two, right? Each person can call two. So now uh, that the, the, the network effect starts to take hold, it becomes more and more valuable, right? Now, why are we talking about uh, Bitcoin? Well, uh, why are we talking about, about network the, the network effect? Because essentially, uh, that's what Bitcoin is and will be. And we'll see, we'll, we'll talk more about it, okay? So there are three common laws for um, assessing the value of communication networks, right? So um, look, I'm not going to bore you with it, but essentially you've got um, broadcast, right? Essentially, uh, that's like the, uh, you know, old school TV, right? You just broadcast. So if there's uh, 50 people, then you broadcast and it's to 50, right? Um, then there is the peer-to-peer. Uh, a very good example is Facebook. Facebook is peer to peer, right? Where the uh, so back to broadcast. Uh, when you do a broadcast, the the value of the network is proportional to the number of viewers, right? But then when you go onto something like a peer to peer, which is Facebook, uh, the value of the network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users. So it it goes up, right? The value goes up, and then um, the next one, right? Where um, the value of group forming network. So an example would be uh, WhatsApp groups, right? You, you, within within WhatsApp, uh, initially it's peer to peer, right? It's 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 person to person. Uh, then you start to form groups, right? And then you form other groups and with that you form other groups. Um, essentially with the group forming networks, right? Uh, it's proportional to the number of, um, uh, of the groups that is formed within it. So look, it's basically uh, the, the value grows even more. So essentially, uh, when it's group forming, um, the value of that network increases even more. Now, uh, those of you uh, who are geeks like myself probably have heard of Metcalfe's Law. Um, so what is Metcalfe's Law? And who is Metcalfe, right? Robert Metcalfe. So he was the inventor of Ethernet. Uh, and he was the inventor of Metcalfe's law, right? His own law. Uh, so, who is he? Well, he he essentially persuaded uh, Deck. I think it was. It's, I think that's uh, it's one of the big guys of uh, digital equipment computers or something. Uh, Intel and Xerox, right? To adopt Ethernet uh, as a standard protocol uh, for for local computer networks, right? So he was um, he was instrumental in standardizing that 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 protocol. Now. The other um, competing proprietary protocols obviously existed, um, but then as as Ethernet pull, well, pulled away and, and begin to, they began to capture more and more market share, right? Uh, because uh, if you were Ethernet compatible, um, then uh, it was just more uh, you could you could then talk to other computers on the network. So so the the, the value of uh, this Ethernet protocol, right? increased so uh, now with the increased value of, of, of ethernet at, um, at a compounding rate right um and the decreased value of competitors uh, regardless regardless of their relative performance right uh soon the ethernet ports became standard feature 
on all modern computers. So you know that little jack, the the Cat Five or Cat Five E or Cat Six, right? That's um, that's essentially who uh, invented by by Robert. Right? Uh, it's funny because uh, he actually used Metcalfe's law as a marketing tool. So Facebook, right? A classic case of Metcalfe's law in action. So if you if you look if you track um, you know, Facebook over the span of 11 years, right? So it's about the same as uh, uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's, uh, you know, 12 years old now. Um, but essentially, Metcalfe's law, right, uh, increases in value. You can see the increase in value, right, uh, over time. So like Facebook, Bitcoin is also a peer-to-peer -peer network, right? It is essentially a peer-to-peer -peer network, right? Now, just to give you some visualizations, right? So, if, if you, if you, uh, so this is a visualization of uh, Facebook, right? Um, of connections between friends, right? Uh, so the clusters of uh, clustering in high schools, college, and significant others, right? Um, and then this is a visualization of the Bitcoin layer two, the Lightning Network, right? So that's that's a visualization of all the interconnected nodes, right? So why 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 are we getting uh, so technical? Why why do we keep talking about networks? Because networks aren't very well understood, right? Or the network effect. Um, I mean, look, we're all part of the network effect, but a lot of us don't uh, may not be aware of it, and 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 therefore we're not we don't understand it too well, right? So so does that mean? that Bitcoin will follow Metcalf's law too? Well, I don't know. Um, but this this uh, $13 billion asset manager seems to think so. NYDIG, all right? NYDIG stands for the New York Digital Investment Group. Um, so that there's a there's an asset management uh, company called Stone Ridge, Stone Ridge Asset Management. Uh, so they essentially came up uh, and... Um, and uh, they they spun out a crypto focused uh, entity, which is NYDIG, New York Digital Investment Group, um, and they raise funds from you know some some uh, uh, the Bessemer Ventures and Ribbit Capital. So these are these are big boys right in the in the space. Um, oh, as at November last year, right, uh, the owners of Stone Ridge Group. Uh, together collectively. So this is the owner uh, collectively uh, owned over 40,000 Bitcoin, right? Okay. So according to NYDIG, right? Um, Bitcoin, the, the, the Bitcoin network uh, is a moat against copycats. Um, what does that mean? Like, so because the Bitcoin because Bitcoin is open source software, uh, what does that mean? Open source software means that you have the ability to go and check out the code, right? It's full transparency. All the lines of code of Bitcoin uh, is there for anyone to read. If you have the necessary skills to read it, you can check out a copy from the repository on GitHub, and then you can just go through that. And uh, if you have the skills, um, you know, you might even suggest changes to it to enhance to make it stronger better faster so that means anybody can check out a copy of that code modify the code a little bit and launch their own coin and you know i could launch a bitcoin andrew right uh, as it has been done before right like litecoin that's exactly what charlie lee did charlie lee took a copy of the code modified it and called it litecoin and you think and 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 so but but you know um whilst you can copy the code and you can launch your own coin um it doesn't take away uh, from it the the network effect right so those who are already on bitcoin yeah look you, some might go on to the the um uh, uh litecoin and stuff uh but many will stay in bitcoin and, and you can still have both right uh, so essentially what NYDIG is saying that, look, uh, it, it's almost a, a, a moat against uh, copycat because of the network effect, right? Uh, so, look, here are just some numbers. Uh, essentially, you know, uh, the 
um, the the uh, let's see, yeah. So since uh, 2011, uh, about 20 billion dollars have been paid out to miners, right, to secure the the Bitcoin's blockchain, and the miners uh, make they make roughly about four billion uh, a year in revenue. Now this is as per the price conversion of Bitcoin back then, right? Uh, if they had kept the Bitcoin and they didn't sell it at market rate at those times, and they kept it till now, you know, when it was at forty two thousand. Um, then obviously it would have made them a lot more. So it, it, it depends, right? Um, so this one that's taken from them, it, it from from uh, it, it's all in dollars. So um, you know it, it's actually converted to dollars uh, as at the price of Bitcoin then, right? Uh, so here's here's just an interesting fact, right? So the uh, this is for the 2019 capex and the uh, for gold uh, gold mining capex, right? Um, it was 8.7 billion, and the capex uh, spent for Bitcoin Network uh, was at 3.8 billion, right? So at roughly 44 percent of uh, the gold mining uh, capex. So this is just a graph that shows you the market cap. Um, you know, doing doing a, a regression analysis, they found that the 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 uh, based on um, Metcalf's law, right? Um, it has Bitcoin. Bitcoin's market cap has actually historically tracked, has actually tracked the uh, Metcalf's law, right? And uh, so, so it says, um, you know, so the number of Bitcoin addresses has rose about eighteen uh, percent from November twenty nineteen to uh, November 2020. So in, in that one year, the, the growth rate has been roughly 80%. The growth rate of the number of Bitcoin addresses, right? So um, looking at, at the different growth rates, it just uh, it just shows you like, so at a, for example, at a 25% growth rate, right? Uh, you'll see 78.1 million addresses in 2025, right? Uh, so if you think about it, wow, 78.1 million, that's a lot. Uh, so that's roughly... If you were to assume each person has, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, one uh, one Bitcoin address per user, uh, then that's roughly uh, one percent of the world's population. So, what does that mean, right? So that look essentially it suggests that Bitcoin is merely at the very, very, very early stages of its global adoption, right? So, if we're thinking of the network effect, um, this is, you know. Uh, Facebook, uh, when 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 Mark Zuckerberg uh, was still developing it, right? It's extremely early days, right? So, does the uh, does Bitcoin's recent uh, price action suggest more users are entering the space? Look, um, what the data does show, right, um, is that you know the the, the daily the daily volume has uh, obviously gone up, um, and also the fact that um, you know um, last year last year PayPal um, allowed for the purchase and selling of uh, I think also for right uh, Bitcoin Ethereum Litecoin and also XRP uh, uh, on the uh, on on PayPal. Now it, it's a it's a walled garden. Uh, thing in the sense that you can buy within the PayPal system, but you you won't be able to send your Bitcoin out. You won't be able to uh, send Bitcoin in, for example. But the fact that uh, it allows them to do it, uh, which means that Facebook, uh, sorry, uh, PayPal would have to then go go out and purchase, right? So um, I think there's been a lot of purchase of Bitcoin, and uh, and obviously uh, I think it's only it's, yeah, so it's only open to the um, 350 million. Uh, Americans, right? It's it's available to Americans. So, yeah. Uh, so, Waiho has a question. Um, Andrew, can you teach me on how one would get started to invest in Bitcoin or crypto? Um, hey, Waiho, look, if, if there's there's enough interest, um, so at Equities Tracker, uh, you know, since 2018, uh, we've been holding classes, right? Um, so, look, if there's enough interest, um, we could potentially um yeah well we could do a class or something right so um the next one okay 
Okay, so we're getting close, and then I see that there are some comments in the in, in the comment section. So, uh, Ben, I see your comments. I will get to it. Uh, Waiho, uh, look, uh, perhaps maybe contact one of the contact us, right? Uh, uh, Equities Tracker, and 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 uh, we're still planning classes. So it, I guess it depends on demand. Uh, I definitely know that that there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of interest right now. Okay, so. Um, if you've actually watched Future Proof, and uh, we called it Crypto Night uh, before we changed the name to Future Proof, uh, we, we we looked at uh, Paul Tudor Jones's um, different uh, his model of valuation of Bitcoin. Uh, we also look at Ark Invest's um, uh, model or, or models, right? Uh, the modeling for the value and how they arrived at uh, at the valuation uh, Bitcoin's valuation, and then. Um, and and today, right? We 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 looked at the um, uh, NY Digs, uh, you know, uh, uh, payment network, uh, you know, the 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 network effect, right? Uh, uh, and and how they kind of value Bitcoin. So if if I were to uh, very quickly summarize, um, so I can best Kathy Wood, right? Very extremely brilliant, smart lady, right? Uh, you know, one of the best. Uh, they have one of the not one. Uh, they have a few of the best performing uh, ETFs out there, right? Uh, because they they focus on disruptive innovation, right? So uh, they they so Kathy looked at three things, right? Uh, and I'll just summarize quickly because if you want, just watch the episode from when I talked about um, that because we go a lot more in depth. But essentially, the the three things were uh, currency demonetization, um, digital gold. And also a hedge against um, asset seizures. So, um, so we, they it, they took a percent. She took a percentage of, you know, for example, the total global currency outside of uh, five countries, five of the largest econ economies. Uh, then, they, um, uh, you know, um, a percentage of the total gold market cap, which I think right now is at twelve trillion. And then uh, a hedge against uh, asset seizures. So. You know, um, uh, high net worth individuals or even just ordinary folk who just want to hold on to some Bitcoin uh, to protect themselves or to have uh, sovereignty over their their own uh, money, right? Uh, so combining the all three cases, um, then uh, we they they derived at the uh, price of one Bitcoin to be at one hundred seventy two thousand. 972.81 right so 172k so that was based on uh kathy wood's uh, uh modeling right um paul tudor jones right he's uh he's an asset manager um and, and so you know he made in fact i i think paul tudor jones is probably one of the earlier ones to make a public announcement uh to say that he had allocated you know uh not more than two percent of his portfolio into bitcoin uh and he worked out one Bitcoin to be roughly a hundred, uh, between the range of sixty-three thousand to one hundred twenty-six thousand dollars. So that was based on uh, Paul Tudor Jones's uh, uh, modeling. Now, again, um, if you look back at some of last year's last year's episode, uh, again, I also go into more detail into how uh, what valuation model that that Paul Tudor Jones did. Uh, then we've got the NY Dig New York Digital Investment Group, where they look, they view or the modeling that they did um, on one Bitcoin, uh, based on it as a payment network. Um, so it comes out to roughly uh, fifty-one thousand uh, to one hundred eighteen thousand, based on based on their models. Um, now these are with very conservative assumptions, um, assuming that there's zero growth in number of users over the next five years. So that's the number. Uh, with zero growth, uh, um, and and uh, and Bitcoin. Um, oh, sorry. Assuming zero growth in users uh, over the next five years, then Bitcoin's uh, price is at uh, around thirty three thousand, which is yeah, thirty three thousand, right? Um, assuming a fifteen percent growth uh, in terms of the network, um, then uh, prices will hit fifty one thousand. Uh, at twenty five percent growth rate, uh, Bitcoin prices will hit one hundred eighteen thousand. So essentially, that's the that's the, the 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 summary of the of the uh, of the model that was used by NYDIG, New York Digital Investment Group, to 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 
to place a valuation on, on Bitcoin, right? Uh, I've actually come to the end of the deck. Well, almost. I've got one more slide. Um, that's for next week. So let's 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 go through some comments, right? Um, so Ben says, I've been wondering if a decentralized financial system can really work in society. You mentioned earlier people sending their coins to the wrong addresses and the money will be lost forever. In a centralized system, I think there would be a way to retrieve it. But in a decentralized system, there's no one that can and bother to help you get that back. Look, Ben, uh, I agree. And hence why I don't think um, it will totally take over banks and banks will no longer be in existence. I think um, if, if, you know, if history is something to go by, um, then it'll just be like uh, publications, right? Uh, you look at, you know, the New York Times is still here. The Star is still around, right? So um, it'll just coexist. I, I feel that, that, you know, there'll be some people who prefer uh, to use a decentralized system and uh, some people who prefer to use a centralized system because there's service and there's someone you can call for help. And there are those, and that's probably where the majority of people are, who want to use both systems because uh, this system might be more efficient for something else and that system might be more efficient for something else. So that's kind of my my personal view. Um, so Waiho has a... Uh, Waiho from Facebook has a question. Um, oh, right. Uh, I've already answered your question, Waiho. Yeah, just contact uh, contact us. Um, Amy... Um, uh, Amy is interested to trade Bitcoin. Uh, fantastic. Um, again, this is not financial advice, right? Um, Wing Lum says, uh, do you know anything that tell the situation with the January 15th deadline? Um, do you trade smaller altcoins and know about staking, farming, Uniswap? Uh, Wing Lum uh, from Face, uh, sorry, no, your uh, Wing Lum is on uh, on YouTube. Uh, look to uh, so uh, so Wing Lam wants to know if um, if if uh, if we do um, if, if I trade smaller smaller altcoins. Uh, personally, yes, uh, I do, um, and in fact, um, uh, Uniswap is uh, one of the coolest uh, decks. This one's a DEX, a decentralized uh, exchange. Uh, it's one of the coolest ones to use. Actually, it's it's um. Uh, you should try it out. Uh, in fact, I use it with uh, most people use it with MetaMask, uh, but I use it with the Trust Wallet because it's actually um, it's it's just really cool. Um, give it a go. Uh, I haven't done any staking or farming. Uh, so, what is staking and what is farming? Look, these, these are probably more advanced uh, concepts for the for the um, for the beginner. But but essentially, um, as you get into DeFi. And you replace human beings and uh, you know uh, financial institutions with code and scripts. Um, they you you still run into issues of how do you provide liquidity uh, onto the network, right? Uh, or how do you provide liquidity onto uh, uh, onto an exchange, a decentralized exchange? So essentially, that's what um, the concepts of staking and farming. That's where it came about. Um, uh, and in all honesty, I have not tried farming. I have not tried staking because I am just uh, uh, I, so I, I come from a tech background. So I uh, I, I guess uh, I'll wait for all the bugs to be ironed out before I try uh, before I try that. Um, and and yeah, and uh, so I'm, I'm a bit more conservative. Um, yeah. Okay. So now look, um, it's nine oh three. This is my final slide. Look. Uh, I just want to say, look, thank you for staying all the way, uh, all the way till now. If if, uh, if you've been watching from the beginning, uh, appreciate it. Uh, the uh, next week we're getting Jonas Schnelli. He'll be dialing in from Switzerland. He is one of the four uh, Bitcoin Core developers who has access to check the Bitcoin Core uh, code base back into uh, GitHub, which is the open source repository for the Bitcoin source code, right? Uh, it'll be a very rare and special uh, show uh, because I managed to, 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 get, uh, to get Jonas on the show. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I appreciate that uh, he's coming on. And it'll be one of the rare occasions um, and topics less discussed uh, whenever you talk crypto because most people just want to talk about price. Um, this helps you actually understand how it all hangs together. And, and I, I felt that it was very important to uh, 
give those uh, those who are new to this space, those who are interested in Bitcoin, uh, you know, uh, or you know, even if you're interested to buy some Bitcoin, uh, you want to do some research and find out what is Bitcoin and what makes it valuable and what holds it up. What are the you know philosophical um, history that that it comes with? Like what what does Bitcoin represent? Uh, and and how how the entire ecosystem hangs together, right? So it's really interesting because. Open source means you get volunteers uh, to uh, to dedicate their time, right, to uh, making making the software better. Now, but if if they're not in in a job, right, uh, uh, and and they're dedicating their time to try to make Bitcoin better, then how are they compensated, right? Yes, they might have certain um, I- ideals, but uh, how are they? How do they pay their bills, right? Uh, so. You will find that this is a a very decentralized approach to things. It, um, it might blow your mind, uh, and 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 I hope it does because um, there is this world out there. I hope you get to know this world because it's a very fun and exciting world, uh, and and I think it makes the world a better place. So uh, look, thank you so much for staying with me. Uh, I hope you 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 know you've learned something tonight, and um, and and yeah, take care, stay safe, right? Uh, stay home. And uh, please, please tune in and share share with your friends and family uh, on next week's episode. Right, get them, tag them, get them in to watch this show because um, it's it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a very rare uh, topic that's talked about in in uh, whenever you talk Bitcoin. So thank you everyone. Have a great night. Thank you, Agnes. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, yeah, I I hope I hope you enjoyed tonight's show and I hope you will enjoy next week's show. All right, take care, guys. Bye-bye. Good night.